So we're now going to use our knowledge of those epithelial layers to talk about how skin grows and then briefly how it repairs itself. So this is going to be first review here of these layers, the stratum, corneum, lucidium, granulosum, spinosum, and basilate. And there's the dermis underneath there and these papilla of the dermis. So remember the cells on the surface of this stratified squamous epithelium are very flat. This is um, really, these are good examples of like squat or squamous cells. Um, they are no longer up, up here, at least. They're super, I mean, can you even see a cell there? They're so thin. These are dead. And these are the cells that exfoliate off and a large amount of skin is in dust all over the place. Um, that's coming from here. They have no nucleus and no organelles. That's why they're so flat. They're almost um, stratified spaghetti. Um, they are though filled with keratin. Keratin is the protein that they make, they made back when they were alive. They can't make protein once they don't have any, once they don't have organelles or nucleus anymore. Um, the keratin is what makes our skin waterproof. So it's a waterproof barrier um, so that like water can't go through here. Like it can somewhat through most cells. too many arrows around here now. So those are continually lost, right? If those are falling off all the time, they need to be replaced by new cells. Erase that. So that is not working. Hmm. If they are replaced by new cells, let's talk about that process that really is not working. The cells at the very bottom down here are, what layer is that? The stratum basilae, single layer. We'll talk about melanocytes more later. Oops, these are constantly dividing. They are stem cells. Stem cells, probably heard of those, right? Are cells that are able to keep going through mitosis. So these basal cells, you'll also see them called, the basal cells are stem cells in this basal layer. Um, they are going through my, mitosis. Mitosis. When they divide, one of the cells has to go somewhere, right? So you've got a cell right here. It divides into two. One cell stays down in the basal layer. One cell pops up into this stratum spinosum. So this is going to be the young cells from that um, basal layer. They are then going to enter the stratum granulosum, right? So this is going to keep happening. It keeps pushing up as the cells divide, continually dividing, push up until the cells reach the stratum granulosum. This is well, where um, they're going to start producing a whole lot of keratin in these granules. So keratin is being produced in the stratum granulosum. Um, as we continue, those cells continue to be pushed up. They, um, that keratin kind of changes um, to a lighter kind of version. So that's that stratum lucidium. Um, they're starting to die and flatten 
and the, the that dark color is lost because the, it's not where most keratin is being produced. It's still there. That's the clear layer. Um, that's functionally kind of all that you need to know. Um, the one to ignore in terms of function, if you forget one. Then, importantly, we're back where we started, stratum corneum. This is that horny layer. So the cells are like dead, no nucleus, no organelles, but um, it's also called, so your book calls it, uh, what's the word I'm thinking of? Horny, <laughs> because in terms of um, thick with keratin, which I shouldn't have the nucleus in there. I'm so used to drawing nuclei. All coated and covered and filled with keratin. Cornification um, is that cor corneum kind of all, and that's what is so protective um, to the to the outside environment. Scaly plates, right? like, kind of like scales. Um, like dragon scales, not quite as cool. Okay, suit of armor. So it's kind of like grass growing from the bottom up. Um, I do have a video I want to show you. I don't think the sound will work. So I'm just going to share my screen and do play the video, which is a nice visualization of these layers rising up from the bottom. So this imagine is your stratum basilae and it's gonna be showing growth from the bottom up. That's how skin grows. Um, as we get higher up here, the nuclei will start popping out. I think it'll be the first thing that happens. Yep, there go. The nuclei are, are dying. Um, cells are dying and flattening. They are, this is show keratin, but it'll be keratin in them. They're both, you can see how scaly they look. Um, that's that stratum corneum up top there. So stratum corneum, we've got now um, exfoliating off. Stratum lucidium would be somewhere like here. Stratum granulosum is where those nuclei are still present, producing that dark keratin in granules. Again, that part's not shown here. Below that, st stratum spinosum, it's a very thick layer. And then stratum basilate would be the very base layer. These are the cells that are dividing and making this whole thing happen. I think that's about all that will happen here. Pretty cool. Okay, one just thought question I want you to think about while I figure out how to go back to my other screen is to think about a tattoo. Um, for a tattoo to be permanent, where must it puncture? Right, a tattoo is going to go through yeah, the epidermis, into the epidermis, right? A needle. Oh my gosh, I can't get my, okay, that's fine. Um, and it's actually gonna go into the dermis because that's what it needs to do to be permanent. Otherwise it's not going to um, last, it's going to, oh, that's the problem. Do I have the wrong one? Oh. That's why I was turning the wrong screen. Okay, the needle's gonna go down like that into the dermis, beautiful needle, right? Here's actually a visual, visual of where tattoo ink is. And that's because if you didn't have it down that low, if you put it right here, it would over time be gone. Um, must be below the basement membrane. Okay, a learning check for you here. Which epithelial cells have the highest rate of division? So mitosis. Keratinocytes, those are the keratin producing cells in the epithelium, right? However, um, so we talked about epithelial tissue growing. The rest, your dermis is able to do stuff still to, to help you with protection. So this would happen if you have a wound that cuts into the dermis, you would then need some dermal um, growth and response to occur. So if you have a wound, um, the first thing that happens is a blood clot 
platforms, um, you know, that's positive feedback that makes that happen. If you don't know the details of that, um, there's going to be first inflammation. That's the first step of tissue repair. So an immune response um, and blood clotting are two things that inflammation does for you. You think of inflammation as bad sometimes, but it is very helpful to stop you from bleeding and um, prevent bacteria from entering or, or address the bacterial that have, that have entered. Then um, we're gonna have growth. So the epithelium regenerates, as you know it can. Um, it's also going to be repair of the dermis. This is um, called granulation tissue. These fibroblasts, remember, fibroblasts are what make fibers. So fibroblasts are going to make what do you think? What do fibroblasts make? Um, fibers. <laughs> and in this case, what are they making? Collagen fibers, proteins that is part of the extracellular matrix um, that makes up the skin, the reticular layer of the dermis. So a lot of fibroblast activity until you have permanent repair. So the epithelium has been, regen been regenerated and this dermal area has been fibrosed um, with fibers, collagen fibers. One thing about a scar is that the collagen fibers are more parallel, and that's what actually makes a scar look different. There, so this would be kind of more dense, regular. I don't know if it's actually classified as that, but it's more, it's going to be parallel, which is what dense, regular connective tissue is. Um, and that's in contrast, right, to, to skin, the dermis, the reticular dermis is dense, irregular connective tissue. So when you have fibers added in a parallel fashion, you can see that that's a scar. 